United Nations spokesperson Stefan Dujarek said that the United Nations message to both India and Pakistan is to quote unquote urgently take steps to lower tensions through meaningful mutual engagement. The world body said that both countries should meet their responsibilities to maintain peace and security in the region. Dujarek said that the UN good offices remained available should the two countries agree. Four Indian passengers are stranded at Pakistan's Lahore airport after the country closed its airspace. Though some of the airports, including Karachi's Jinnah International Airport, have resumed operations, the country's northeast and northwestern airspace still remains closed. At least 25 people were killed and Dozens others were injured when a train smashed through buffers and caught fire at Cairo Central train station. Authorities said that according to the preliminary investigation, the accident occurred when the train's driver stepped off the locomotive to talk to another drive, driver without pulling the hand brake. Now, most of the bodies have not been identified as they are completely charred. According to local reports, the train's driver has been arrested. U.S. citizen accused by the government of Singapore of stealing a database of HIV patients has been jailed in the United States. Mickey Ferreira Bronches has been charged with illegal possession of identification documents. Singapore claims that Bronches not only stole the database of 14,200 HIV positive cases but also leaked the data. Bronches worked as a lecturer in Singapore before he was jailed for several drug and fraud related offences and deported to the United States last year. SpaceX and Tesla chief Elon Musk changed his Twitter name to Elon Tusk and promised some news from Tesla. Musk also changed his Twitter display and in a series of tweets, Musk accused the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission of failing to read Tesla's annual reports. Shares of Tesla went up on Wednesday afternoon after Musk said that Tesla would have news at 2 p.m. California time on Thursday. Michael Cohen, who is the former fixer and a personal lawyer of U.S. President Donald Trump, gave his testimony before the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Cohen said that he fears that Trump will not allow his successor to peacefully take control of the White House if he loses the 2020 presidential elections. Among a range of other things, Cohen said that Trump devalued his assets to pay lower tax and inflated them to be on Forbes' list. Cohen said that Trump had told him to threaten people with litigation at least 500 times and that he is aware of possible illegal acts involving the U.S. president. The U.S. government has been demolishing eight prototypes of U.S. President Donald Trump's promised border wall. The four concrete and four steel panels are located close to an existing barrier separating San Diego and Tijuana in Mexico. Those prototypes had become powerful symbols of Trump's presidency when they were built nine months after he took office. The Trump administration said that elements of the prototypes have been melded into current border fence designs and they have served their purpose. Trump's opponents claim that these structures were a waste of taxpayers' dollars. The Kremlin said that U.S. territory was constantly being used to launch cyber attacks against Russia. Kremlin, however, said that it was unable to confirm a U.S. media report that the U.S. military had disrupted the Internet access of a Russian troll farm. The Washington Post earlier reported that the U.S. military had disrupted the Internet access of a Russian troll farm accused of trying to influence American voters on the 6th of November last year, which was the day of the congressional elections. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said he did not know how much truth there was to that media report. The White House barred reporters from Reuters, the Associated Press, Bloomberg and the Los Angeles Times from covering a dinner between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders said there were sensitivities over shouted questions in the previous praise. During Trump's initial interaction with Kim, two reporters had asked the questions to Trump on the summit and Michael Cohen's testimony. Both the reporters were a part of the White House press pool, which covers the U.S. president wherever he goes. 
The U.S. Trade Representative's office said that it would move to formally suspend a scheduled tariff increase on Chinese goods until further notice. This comes after U.S. President Donald Trump decided to delay his Friday deadline for a U.S.-China trade deal amid progress in the talks. The statement was issued after U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer testified before the U.S. House Ways and Means Committee, in which he said that the Trade Representative's office was following a legal process to implement the delay. British Prime Minister Theresa May has won a two-week reprieve from British lawmakers who postponed a threatened rebellion aimed at blocking a no-deal Brexit. This was after May agreed to a possible delay to Britain's departure from the European Union. After months of saying that Britain must exit EU on 29th of March, the opposition Labour Party, however, announced that it would now support a new public vote on Brexit. This is the first time since Britain voted in 2016 to leave the EU that one of its main parties has backed giving voters a chance for second referendums. The head of the Organization of American States and the President of the European Parliament said that they would not object if Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro ran as a candidate in a new presidential election. Both the officials, however, warned that new elections must be held in line with international standards and with new electoral authorities in order to avoid a fraudulent process. The officials maintained that the May 2018 elections in which Maduro was re-elected for a second consecutive term was not free and fair. Thousands of Maduro supporters took part in a rally in Caracas, denouncing international threats of military intervention in Venezuela. Thousands gathered in the Venezuelan capital, waving Venezuelan and socialist flags and signs that read, Hands off Venezuela. The crowd also commemorated the 30th anniversary of El Caracaso, a wave of protests that began in Caracas on 27 February in the year 1989, during which hundreds of demonstrators were killed by security forces. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari hit back at the opposition party, saying it is obvious that elections were free and fair. Buhari was speaking during an electoral commission ceremony confirming his victory. Buhari congratulated all candidates and urged them to accept the democratic approach in Nigeria. He also said that election is not war and should never be seen as a do-or-die affair. Buhari won the recent polls with 55% of votes. South Korean car battery manufacturer's SK Innovation is all set to open its second plant in Hungary, Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Zizarto said. The 430,000 square meter plant in Komarom will create 1,000 new jobs in the country. Zizarto added that the plant will also receive financial support from the Hungarian government. Construction of the factory will begin in March 2019 and is expected to be completed in 2020. The battery manufacturer's plan to launch production in Komarom in 2021 to 2022. It will mainly be for the European export markets. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visited an adventure park in Northern Ireland. The royal couple donned life vests and helmets before getting into canoes and paddling them out into the lake at the Roscoe Youth Village. Prince William was seen flaunting his balancing skills while walking across a log at the facility. The Roska Youth Village caters to vulnerable and needy children from across Ireland. As part of their two-day visit, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge will be focusing on working with young people.